this is the Google Pixel 7 Pro. It's got a glossy glass backing, so it's beautiful to look at, but also very slippery. So if you are getting this phone, I recommend using a case with it for better grip and peace of mind. I have been using it naked for a while, and I'm going to give you a deep dive into what I think of it versus the iPhone 40 Pro. It's about to slip. <laughs> You see, much of the hype around the Pixel 7 Pro isn't really about the specs of the device, although that is important. It's really about the software. And Google has been hammering home that if you want the stock Android experience, you want to be among the first to get software updates, the most cutting edge text-to-speech, computational photography, it has to be a Pixel. But what really got me excited about the Pixel 7 Pro are some of the new camera features like Super Res Zoom, Picture Unblur or Photo Unblur, and Magic Eraser. Having tested those features, I have to say that they do work as advertised. Used to be that if you wanted to do similar things, you'll have to use third-party apps like Photoshop. But with the latest Pixel, not anymore. In this video, I'll be talking about these new features, as well as camera performance, speaker quality, and more. It's a lot of ground to cover, so I've split this video into chapters. That way, if you want to, you can navigate to the parts you're interested in. Also, do subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified for more content from this channel. Super Res Zoom. Now, that is easily the best digital zoom right now. With other phones, you can easily get clean pictures with optical zoom. That's pretty common. Even this has five times optical zoom. But once the digital zoom kicks in, that's when pictures start to get noisy. You see this a lot with most phones, including the iPhone 14 Pro. It snaps clean pictures up to five times telephoto. But the more you zoom in digitally, the noisier it gets. I found that Super Res Zoom is able to denoise pictures quite effectively, giving you this clean image at 15 times digital zoom, which is the iPhone 14 Pro's maximum range. And even beyond the iPhone's maximum range, at 30 times digital zoom, the Pixel 7 Pro can denoise pictures pretty well. And it does this quickly almost as soon as you frame the shot. Magic eraser, now that is also interesting. You can erase people out of the picture with a tap to make your pictures look prettier. Cruel. It's not perfect because it can't see what's behind the item or the person you want to erase. So the AI has to guess what to fill into the blanks. But if you don't focus your attention on those areas, it does look very seamless. Again, one less reason to use Photoshop. Photo unblur. Now, that actually got me to dig up some old blurry pictures just to see if I can sharpen these images like this one from 2003, this one from 2007, and this very blurry one from my trip to Europe in 2012. Yeah, it sort of works if you don't mind that the sharpened pictures look more like paintings rather than photographs. And I found that you will get the best results with pictures that are not too blurry like this one. For more blurry pictures, the result is still pretty decent, but it didn't sharpen it to the extent that I was expecting. Seems like even magic has its limits. Nonetheless, all of these are very interesting, useful features that I wish the iPhone had. Let's wait a few years. Apple will probably roll out these features and call them by a different name. In terms of main camera performance, in some ways, I do prefer how pictures look on the Pixel. The colors are more vibrant and somehow more color accurate to what my eyes are seeing. In terms of shooting video, likewise, the Pixel looks more vibrant, more color accurate. But the iPhone's stabilization seems to be a little smoother, but not by a whole lot. Okay, I've got the iPhone 14 Pro on my left hand, and on my right hand, this is the Google Pixel 7 Pro. I'm gonna walk up the stairs, let's see how stabilized it is.
okay, it looks pretty stabilized. One thing I'm noticing here is that the color temperature is quite different on both phones. It looks more vibrant on the Pixel 7 Pro. But I gotta say that the iPhone 14 Pro's camera is also looking pretty good. In terms of low light photography, the Pixel 7 Pro's shots do look cleaner and more color accurate. That's great, right? That's exactly how night sight should work. But I found that shots from the iPhone 14 Pro looks better. And here's why. It captures more detail in the shot. You can see it from this signboard how the iPhone 14 Pro captures the lines in the signboard that are simply not there on the Pixel. The reason why I prioritize detail over color accuracy is color is something that you can fix in post-processing. Even denoising is possible in post-processing, but if the detail is not captured, it's incredibly hard, if not impossible, to bring back the details in the picture. Now I'm going to talk about the Pixel 7 Pro's pros and cons. The biggest pro for me is obviously the camera and those new features we talked about. It feels very advanced and innovative. It's also got great thermals. When I was shooting videos on both devices, the iPhone 14 Pro was heating up like crazy. I talked about that when I was reviewing it. But the Pixel 7 Pro only felt a bit warm in the main camera area. That's awesome. And its battery life is pretty good. It's got 5,000 milliamp hours of juice, so I could easily get a full day's use out of this, watching videos, shooting pictures, or just scrolling through Twitter endlessly. Just scroll and scroll and scroll. The fingerprint sensor is snappy, so is the face unlock. In short, it feels like a powerful, polished device, which is where Google wants to be with the new Tensor G2 SOC, but maybe a bit too polished physically. And this is a great segue into the cons because as I said in the beginning, the high gloss backing of the 7 Pro makes it a very slippery device. Now, the glass may be durable, super durable even. It is after all Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and back, but nobody wants to risk getting dings and scratches on their brand new phone, right? So it needs a cover, but you have to get that separately because Google doesn't supply one in the box. Nor do they supply a power adapter. It only has a Type-C cable and a Type-C converter in the box. But of course, an argument can be made that it is precisely because there is no power adapter in the box can Google charge a much lower price point for these devices. Because how much it costs to get each device into the stores also plays a part into the overall price, right? The screen is great. Spacious, sharp, and vivid. After all, it is a QHD plus screen. And when you're indoors or under the shade, it's bright enough. But it still struggles under harsh sunlight. You can still see what's on the screen, yes, but it is very dim. And finally, the speakers. These are loud stereo speakers, yes. The right side's battery drains much faster than the left. Some of you are reporting a little more than an hour of battery, when it should be around four, maybe up to six hours of battery. But it's so unbalanced. There are two speakers, one on the top, one on the bottom, but the bottom speaker is a bit louder than the top one. And it throws off the center, especially when you're watching videos or playing games in landscape. That is not what I would expect from Google's flagship device. Still, for the price it's going for $799, it's looking like pretty good value for money for a flagship device from none other than Google. Anyway, I will be using this phone a lot more and I will come back to you with a follow-up video most likely about gaming performance. So do subscribe and tap the bell button to stay notified for that video and more. Thanks for watching, smash like and share if you like this video. By the way guys, join the Discord. It's where we hang out and chat. Link is in the description below. Click here to watch my review of 
the iPhone 14 Pro or watch another video from this channel.